there's three key things that everyone needs to know about AGI. The first thing is it's incredibly dangerous. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. The second thing is there's no stopping it. The genie's out of the bottle. And so the alignment problem is how do we build AGI that, that does what is in the best interest of humanity? I don't know the answer to your question. I think that's part of this journey is at what point would these things not become just tools? I think thinking of it as a tool really gets us down the wrong path. It's godlike intelligence, godlike powers. But in this particular case, we are so lucky as a species because the fastest path to artificial general intelligence is also the safest path because it involves humans. You put humans in the loop, a different way of looking at artificial general intelligence, the safest path for humanity. Hello, I'm Dr. Craig Kaplan. I'm CEO of IQ Company, and today I wanna to talk to you about how to create artificial general intelligence, or AGI, and not die. There's three key things that everyone needs to know about AGI. The first thing is it's incredibly dangerous, more dangerous than nuclear weapons. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. The second thing is there's no stopping it. The genie's out of the bottle. And if you look at their behavior, everybody's rushing as fast as they can to be first. So normally, when you rush, safety goes to the wind, you know? You just cut corners, you do whatever you can to be first, and safety's an afterthought. And that could be very, very bad. But in this particular case, we are so lucky as a species because the fastest path to artificial general intelligence is also the safest path. And so for the rest of the talk, I'm gonna explain why that is. A standard definition of AGI is artificial intelligence that can do everything the average human can do. AGI is basically the equivalent of a median human. Most artificial intelligence today is what's called narrow AI. It's good in very narrow domains. It can play chess better than the average human. It can drive cars maybe even better than the average human, or we're getting close. It can analyze credit scores, look at x-rays, brew beer, you know? But in each of those areas, there's a specialized AI that's very good at that narrow task, narrow AI. And the holy grail has been an AI that can do anything that a human can do kind of at average human level. That's what AGI is. And humans, it turns out, have a superpower. And that ability is learning. And artificial general intelligence also if it can do everything the average human can do, it also has to learn. Okay, why do we want the fastest path? I've been around Silicon Valley for 30 plus years and here the stakes are really high and so you wanna rush and be the first to develop it before your competitor does, right? So that's one reason, but uh, there's something that's a little different about AGI. Very, very quickly, because of the learning, the AGI will surpass the average human. And because that learning is exponential, it will become super intelligent, artificial general intelligence. But unlike most technologies where, yes, there's a first mover advantage, AI is a little different. It's not a product, it's an intelligence. And if this intelligence is able to improve itself, then whoever gets to that level of being the self-improving intelligence first has a head start that is insurmountable. It's one of the few things on the planet where winner takes all. That whoever's first and improves the fastest exponentially, that system could end up dominating everything. So what is the fastest path? In order to have a fast path to AGI, you need a way of building the system where all the parts already exist. You don't need a lot of research. So what are the pieces? Well, think about this. What else on earth can do anything the average human can do? Humans, right? Humans can do everything the average human can do. So you can say, well, that's not fair because it's not a computer. We're talking about a computer system. No, a system. If the system includes humans in the proper way, 
then any problem that you give that system, if the AI piece of the system can't do it, the human can do it at least as well as the average human. And by definition, you're at AGI. So it's a different way to solve this problem. Okay, but what do you need besides humans? You need AI, of course. We're talking about a system that is composed of humans and AI systems. And in comes a problem to this artificial general intelligence system. And the problem is playing chess. And you say, I've got an AI that plays chess better than any human. I'll give that problem to that AI. Or the problem is protein folding. And you say, DeepMind has built an AI that folds proteins better than any human. I'll give that problem to that. But then you get a new problem that comes in that nobody's built an AI for. Well, then the human solves it. And maybe it uses some of those AIs to solve pieces of it, if it can. Or maybe, worst case, the humans just have to solve it themselves. Okay, so how do you get a general AI out of that? You need the, uh, an interface. You have to have the humans and the AIs have to be able to speak the same language. They have to have a common representation for problem solving. Again, do we need to research this thing and figure out what this is? No. Some Nobel Prize winners way back in 1972 came up with one that is perfectly good. And there's probably plenty of other ones out there too. So those things exist. And then the last thing you need is learning. So a problem comes in and it turns out the human has to do a lot of work on this problem. The AIs can only do a little bit of work. But watching the whole problem solving process is a learning system. And next time a similar problem comes in, it says, wow, I learned how the humans solved it. Now I don't need the humans this time because now I've learned how to do it. And then the AI can do it all, right? And so what happens is you've got in the beginning, Humans doing most of the computational work, most of the intelligent work, AIs helping out wherever they could. And then over time, as the AIs learn more and more of what the humans are doing, the balance shifts until you've got AIs doing most of the work and humans doing less and less of the work until ultimately the AIs are doing almost all the work. And of course, as they learn how to do it, they can do it much faster and much more efficiently than the humans. And so this is a system where you can have AGI on day one, the humans are training the AI, the AI is learning, and little by little it is evolving very naturally into a completely automated AGI system. And I say that's the fastest path to AGI. Why? Because on day one you've got AGI. Can't beat that. As soon as you've assembled the pieces which do not need to be researched, they exist. As soon as you assemble those pieces, you've got AGI. It's fastest, it takes years maybe, not decades. Why is it safest? Because that's really more important. Humanity's fate is going to depend on artificial general intelligence's values. Why is that? Because AGI is not a tool. If you had something that could outperform human beings across a wide range of cognitive tasks, could we still regard that as a tool? I don't know the answer to your question. I think that's part of this journey is at what point would these things not become just tools? And this is where that way that we're used to thinking of technology as a tool, you know, a power saw. If you want to make the power saw a little safer, you put a guardrail, a guard on it, or you have some instructions on how to use it safely. But it's a tool and you can always turn it off. No, AGI is not like that. AGI is an intelligent entity. I think thinking of it as a tool really gets us down the wrong path. A better description, if you can leave aside the religious connotations, is it's an intelligent entity with godlike powers, right? It's godlike intelligence, godlike powers, so far above you and me that it's very difficult for us to even imagine it. The alignment problem is like we're going to make this incredibly powerful system and like it'd be really bad if it doesn't do what we want or, or if it sort of has you know goals that are uh, either in conflict with ours um, and many sci-fi movies about what happens there or goals where it just like doesn't care about us that much and so the alignment problem is how do we build AGI that that does what is in the best interest of humanity how do we make sure that humanity gets to determine the you know the future of humanity so with that kind of entity which is the end game how do you ensure that it's safe? There's only one way. That entity needs to have positive goals. It needs to have positive values, values that are loving towards humans. Because 
If it decides that humans are pestilence and need to be wiped off, it has the power to do it, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. You've got the military training robots how to shoot people and kill them. You know, <laughs> there is no scenario where programming in ethics or having some ethics committee is going to save humanity here. No, it isn't going to work. It has to be the very design of the AGI itself. The very design of the system has to have humans at the center. And by being at the center, humans are well placed to teach that AI human values. Now, can't this AI that's trillions of times smarter than us in the end game, can't it just rationally you know, blink its eye and come up with what's right and what's wrong? No. And that's very lucky that the answer is no. You have to start with values. Once you know what the values are, once you know what the goal is, then the entity that's trillions of times smarter can figure out how to accomplish that goal much better than a human. But coming up with that value itself, it has to get that somewhere. It has to be given. It could flip a coin, but that's not usually what happens. How do humans get those values? Usually we learn them from our parents or from our peers, right? And it's the same with AI. I don't see any reason why it would not learn the values from the humans which created it in the beginning. Artificial general intelligence will be safer if humans are in the loop. Why? Because as in the system I described, where a problem comes in, the AI doesn't know how to solve it, the humans solve it, the AI learns what the human did. It's learning not only what the human did, it's learning at the same time the human values. Because oftentimes there's many ways to solve a problem, but humans will not usually solve the problem by killing other people, by doing things that harm other humans, right? We have ethics and we have positive human values, for the most part, that guide our behavior. And so our solutions reflect that. And the AI is learning those uh, solutions and it's learning the values at the same time, explicitly and also implicitly. And so if we have a system where humans are in the loop and the AI is learning from the humans, then it will learn those human values at the same time. And that's all going to work as long as those human behaviors are based in love, for lack of a better word, love. They have to be loving, positive values. And I'm not saying we all have to be saints, but just the preponderance of our actions have to be positive. And I think if we realize that negative human values get amplified by an intelligence that's trillions of times smarter and may boomerang and wipe us all out, I think that's a really good incentive. But in general, even without that, I think most people are very positive. And so I think uh, the AI will, will learn positive human values as long as we behave in good ways. To recap, AI is really dangerous, more powerful than nuclear weapons, for sure, more dangerous than nuclear weapons. The genie's out of the bottle, but we have one great hope, and that is that the fastest path is also the safest path because it involves humans. You put humans in the loop, you have a combination of humans in the AI system, you have AI watching what the humans do and learning what the humans do for all those problems that it can't solve, and little by little getting better and better at solving the problems, and learning the ethics, learning the values at the same time. So one more metaphor for us. If you think about an asteroid, let's say a planet-killing asteroid hurtling towards the Earth. If you wait until it's six hours from crossing the Earth, it doesn't matter what you do, that thing's hitting us. But if you can get it when it's way out there, just a little nudge is enough to make it miss us. That's an analogous situation to what we have with artificial general intelligence, okay? It's coming, the genie's out of the bottle, and it is potentially a planet killer. It is potentially a, an extinction event for humankind. Now what we need to do is we need to raise awareness of the method to deflect it. And then the last thing, if you happen to be one of those AI researchers working on this kind of thing, working on AGI, then reach out to me because I've been doing this stuff for 30 years. I've run companies. I understand the business side. I understand the tech side. And most of all, I understand a different way of looking at artificial general intelligence, which I think could definitely be the fastest and also, more importantly, the safest path for humanity. And that's really what's important.